Hello, it's December 1st, 2012. It's unusually sunny and uh, warm. And this is Dino Shed Part 3. Here's the pump. It showed up before Thanksgiving and I'm finally getting around to installing it. It's a six and a half horsepower life and motor. It's a Chinese knockoff of a Honda. I typically try to buy American, but this is one of those deals where it's hard to beat the price. Uh, $200 delivered. And uh, the, they're supposed to be pretty decent motors. We'll see how well it holds up. It pumps 220 gallons per minute, which should take me into the 2,000 horsepower range if the water break can withstand it. We'll find out. I've moved the tanks back here behind the shed, plumbed it in with 3 inch PVC pipe. It's neck down here to 2 inch going into the shed. For storage, this coupling here slides back on the pipe and the pipe swings up. And I just take this one loose, the pump comes out and goes in the shed. Here's the tubing coming into the shed runs up out through here and we're running along the edge here and out this way okay I've got the tubing installed running along the back wall there comes up here and the reason I have it coming up here is so I can control the flow with this valve it's a gate valve I picked it up from McMaster it was $25 and uh, yesterday I bored it out so I could attach a motor to it and control it electronically uh, it didn't work out so well I had a brush motor hooked to an amplifier and I was trying different ways of controlling it, but without an uh, encoder on it to make it a servo or using a stepper, um, I didn't have a whole lot of control because the valve has stiction. So I had to turn the current up to overcome the stiction, and then the valve would just move way too much. So to prove the concept that it actually works, I'm just going to have it up here and manually control it. Later on, if it, all this works, um, I'm going to buy some smarter electronics and I'll have the computer actually control the load of the motor. So I'll be able to set the ramp rate or just have the motor to set a specific RPM. Okay, I have everything mocked up now. I have water coming to and from the load control valve and going back into the cell. Comes back into the short pipe right here. I need to cut it off here and I'm going to cap it. So water comes through this way here goes to the valve and comes back down to here. This will be capped off. I'm going to drill and tap it uh, for some MPT hose barbs that I'm going to install. Those hose barbs will have hose hooked to them and they'll run to the inlets on either side of the water break. I have uh, 12 in total. Right now I'm using four of them. Uh, so water goes in there, water comes out. My rotor is Siamese, so I have basically two water breaks in one housing. So I have uh, two chambers. So there's water coming out of this side, water coming out of this side, same thing on the bottom. So right now it's plumbed with four inlets and four outlets of half inch ID hose. Um, we'll see if that's enough. Here are all the fittings and the tubing, primed and ready for assembly. I've let the cement cure overnight and now I'm doing some leak testing. I've installed four outlets on it to run into the uh, water break. I can install up to 12 if I need to. Um, so I have the green hoses there are all plugged and I have the orange hose running out here just to see if my valve worked, which it does. At idle, the pump, I'm, with the pump at idle, I'm basically getting what you'd expect out of a water hose. I ran into a snag back here. As you can see, everything is wet. I tried turning the RPM up on the pump a little bit and this connection here which is a low pressure coupling uh, came off, slid off of the PVC and I had water going everywhere and basically had to climb into the stream of water to shut the pump off because the switch is back in the back here. Um, what I think I'm going to try doing is uh, I'm going to take a coupling and cut, it, cut part of it off and uh, cement it onto the end of this tube so that the coupling can't slide over it. And I sawed the end off a coupling and uh, cemented it onto the tube there. Hopefully that'll keep that adapter from sliding off. Um, next video I should be getting the radiator set up and until then, thanks for watching.